for him in our midst on today. And certainly we just praise God for Amen. just all the many blessings. As uh, Haywood has said, that uh, you know we are blessed. Whether Amen. sometimes we recognize it or not. Uh, we do take Amen. things for granted. We don't recognize a lot of things, but God is good to us every Amen. day. Yes. Every day. Amen. Um, and we're going to see today that um, uh, our blessings are probably even bigger than what we think. Amen. Uh, the key word, if I was to use the key word today, is going to be more. More. Amen. More. You know, just more. Amen. And we're going to see how God is just more. Amen. And how when we think we got it, there's still more. Amen. And, and it's, just, it's just that reality Amen. of just having more Amen. with God um, and understanding that God has even more. Um, Amen. And so our story today, as we have seen, we've watched Jesus um, po poise the question to Peter. Amen. Who do people say that I am? And they came up with all these different mm -hmm. things. Things that we still have going on today. Amen. People still think he's just a good man or a good prophet or a good this. And people think he's still, you know, somebody that it, it's uh, anointed, but, you know, and it has been given abilities by God. But Peter said, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, you and God are what? One. Amen. And he said that my father, he said that flesh and blood. Amen. But something more told him. It wasn't just flesh and blood. It was something more. And that more was the Father. He said, Amen. my Father ability. Certainly right after that, we studied on last week, how when Jesus began to open up to them and tell them, I'm going to go into Jerusalem. I'm going to be uh, rejected by the religious leaders. And, I will go, and I'm going to be put to death. And I will rise again. And Peter took Jesus aside and said, that's not going to happen. That ain't the way we see it happening. You're going to go and take over. You're going to go in there. And Jesus told Peter, now do what? Get, Get thee behind me, Satan. Satan. <laughs> so we see that within just a short period of time, how the Lord can have your, have your work within your spirit. But shortly after that, how the devil can get into your mind. Mm -hmm. right? Because you are so fixated on doing it the way you see it has to be done. That's how the, the devil drops breadcrumbs. <laughs> And from a logical standpoint, you think I should go from here to here and from here to here. This just makes sense to me. But God says it's going to happen regardless as to how you perceive it. But we try to put the mechanism, how it's going to happen. I don't see how this is going to be. I don't see how they're going to do that. I don't see how they're going to accomplish this. I don't see how. This and we start trying to form the mechanism in our mind when it's just a matter of just trust me. If you're going to call me Lord, then you should do what I say. Jesus said often, why call ye me Lord and do not what I say? Amen. If he's Lord, that means you're doing what? Trusting him. Amen. Now, if he's not Lord, then call him what you really call him to be. Call him Jesus, my advisor. Jesus, my uh, uh, talk things over with partner. Jesus, my suggestion maker. Because that's how a lot of times we interact with him. Jesus, my idea person to give me thoughts that I can comp you know, think about. Or is he Lord? Because if he's Lord, then we got to say, whether I understand it or not, I trust the Lord. It's just going to be the way the Lord has it to be. Now, as God gives me the understanding and the revelation, I'm going to walk therein. The Bible says, as you see the light, that's where you walk. So we're going to see a lot of that even on today. Now, when Jesus uh, continued on, um, and he told Peter that, um, that you don't, when you talk like that, Peter, you're not looking after the things of God, but you're looking after the things of what? Of men. And that's kind of where we left off on last week. So let's, let's pick up our continuing story here, uh, keeping in mind that we're looking at the merged gospel, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all merged together in a chronological order to give a full, complete story of the work and the teachings and, and, uh, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take a listen to story 116, coming after Jesus. Story 116, coming after Jesus. 
Summoning the crowd with his disciples, he said to all, If anyone is willing to follow behind me, let him renounce himself and pick up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his soul will destroy it. But whoever destroys his soul for my sake and the gospel, this one will find it and will save it. For what does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world, yet destroying or forfeiting his soul? Or what will a man give for the exchange of his soul? For the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will be paying to each one according to his deeds. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him whenever he comes in his glory and the glory of his Father and of the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, that there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, the kingdom of God coming in power. All right, all right, good morning, sis. Good morning. All right, story 116, uh, the com coming after Jesus. And this is um, a very um, important story in the sense that it's leading up to something that we're going to see in our next story. Uh, but by no means do we skip this from the aspect of its importance. <clears throat> because what we see here is that right after that conversation that Jesus had with Peter, the very next thing that we see here listed is that Jesus begins to summon once again the who? The crowd. Mm -hmm. Now we talked about the crowd and we're going to continue to talk about the crowd. That same crowd that exists back then, that's the same kind of crowd we got today. <coughs> And so, but he calls them all, all right? And he says he calls the crowd with his disciples. So do you see how Jesus is making that distinction? I have the, the, those that I have chosen, but I also have these people that are following me. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give these folks that are following me an opportunity now to make a difference. And that usually happens in people's lives. Sometimes people will follow Jesus for, you know, the so-called loaves and fishes, you know, for the good things that they can get. But then something bad happens. Something unexpected. Things because we have been told by uh, the historical teaching that when you come to Jesus, Jesus is there to make your life wonderful. And he's going to make your life just better. You're going to have all these wonderful things happen to you. You're going to be respected in your community and everything. And we know that is not what? True. That is not true. Jesus said I, he came to bring a sword. He's going to come and he's going to bring, he, he's going to bring division. Mm -hmm. Because one's going to believe and another one's not. So in this realm, though he is the prince of peace, he said, I did not come to bring what? To bring peace. But a sword. A sword. Mm -hmm. Now, but if you do want to have peace, you can't have it without the prince of peace, which we will gain. But our peace is not in this realm. Our peace is in the realm to come, which is why we have to recognize that we don't just live for now, but we live for, and what's the key word? More. We're living for more. And if we don't keep in mind that we're, we're living not just for this natural realm, and there's a lot of wonderful things that we can do for uh, each other and for yourself and for God in this natural realm. By no means am I saying just divorce yourself from society. That is not what God wants us to do. But you cannot say I'm doing it for this realm. It has to be for the realm to come. It has to be for the realm of more. Which the Bible calls the spiritual realm. The heavenly places. Uh, and, and godly places. That's where you want to experience your peace, because that's, that's where you're going to. Because no matter what you do here, this place will not have peace. Amen. It won't. Now, do we strive and work for it? Yes, we do. Right? Do we get discouraged? Yes, we do. Sometimes you do. Yes, it comes up. Do we quit? Sometimes. Sometimes you want to quit. But what does Jesus tell us? I mean, the scripture tells us that, that if you, what, faint not. No. Now, if, why would he tell us if we faint not? 
because he knows we may get to a point where we feel like I'm going to faint. There's no need for me to tell you watch out for that hole in the ground if there's no hole in the ground. If I say, like, somebody should have had a sign, watch out for those ramps in the street. Yes. Because I ran over them. I ran over them too. <laughs> All right. So, but, that, but you don't tell somebody to watch out for something that's not a possibility. So the fact that the Lord tells us time and time again, don't get weary in well-doing. Uh, gird up yourself. Yes. Encourage yourself. Mm -hmm. Means that you're going to need to be girded up. You're going to need to be encouraged. You're going to need to be strengthened. Because this world will beat you down. Alright? Now. That's it. So he's calling this crowd. Alright? With his disciples. It says to, uh, to all. If anyone is willing to follow behind me or follow me. In other words, so he's saying, if you're going to follow me, if you're willing to follow me, now he's talking to who? The crowd, the crowd. And his disciples. He's now letting them know, I'm going to tell you some things you need to do. Look what he says. He says, let him renounce himself. Number one, renounce yourself. Now, what does renouncing yourself mean? What does, what does taking yourself out of the picture mean? Renouncing yourself means that you can't be following Jesus trying to get what all I can get. It's not about what I want, but it's about what the Lord wants. If we don't align our thinking and our hopes and our dreams with the Lord, we automatically, number one, set ourselves up for, for uh, disappointment. And that's a, a lot of reasons why we end up in disappointment, not because of the struggle with God, but because of our own misfocus, our own misjudgment, our own uh, 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 false attitudes as to what things should be. Um, you know, if you come to the Lord thinking, well, I'm always going to get some fishes and some loaves. God, he fed, it, he fed us at the 5,000. He fed us at the 4,000. Uh, hey, when are we going to get to 3,000? When are we going to get to 6,000 feet? When, when is that going to show up? Are we going to get to 200 feet? Well, if you're trying, if that's why you follow me, you can stop now. So he said, you got to put your what? Yourself aside. Don't try to follow Jesus looking how Jesus can fulfill your will and your, your, your uh, agenda. When your agenda aligns with God's agenda, that's when the Lord says you can ask what you will. What scripture says, if you be in me and I be in you, then you can ask what you will. But so many people say, well, I'm in me. And I'm going to ask what I will. No, you can't, you can't get it that way. You can't get your own will. You've got to line yourself up with who? God's will. All right. So if anyone is willing um, to follow after me, let him renounce himself and pick up his cross daily. Now, taking up your cross, what does that mean? Get your Bible, certainly. What else? What about, what, what, what is the cross a symbol of? Suffering. Suffering. So, the struggle, the uphill climb, you know, that, that song, you know, <coughs> Lord give me strength, uh, I, I, how the words go, climbing the rough side of the mountain, mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't remove the mountain, give me strength to do what? To climb. climb. Well, I knew the words would come somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the idea is that can I go through? We talked about this on last week when I gave the, uh, the analogy of, of what if you are paper, if you imagine that you are a piece of paper and you, sur and, and, and you are now surrounded by fire. And so many of us will say, well, well what do you pray for? If you paper surrounded by fire, so I pray for rain. I pray for water to come through. I pray for a big wind to blow the paper, to blow the, the, the fire down or I pray for a wind to lift me up out of the but how many pray to say well change me from paper to steel or to granite so that the paper doesn't get what affected by and we talked about that how we have the story of the Hebrew boys that's exactly what happened to them God didn't remove the fire from them they got thrown in the fire but the scripture says that not only were they not burned up, but they didn't even have the smell of smoke 
But you know the fire was hot because the bands that, that bound them were what? Burnt off. And so that story oftentimes is so popular because it's, you know, so it's, it's, it's so, you know, so wowing. But when you look deep into it, it, the aspect of it is going through things and being able to endure it, not because you're just going to grit your teeth and go through it, but because God is in you and he has changed you. Be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed. The Hebrew boys were transformed into something that that fire could not affect. And so we have to look at today at our society. We got fire around us all. You know, fire in your family, fire in our nation, all kinds of stuff. Amen. And so you just got to say, well, Lord, help me to go through it. This is what that taking up that cross, that difficulty, that struggle. And once we are no longer move so easily and, and yes, does that take some development and some, and some training? When trouble comes it's just we, we flip <laughs> Amen, Amen. <laughs> My dictionary here it says cross as a symbol it's any suffering that's endured for Christ's sake so when it says any that means any and everything mm -hmm. that you might suffer, you know, for the sake of the sake of Christ. Exactly. And and that that last portion of that, any suffering for the sake of Christ, is important too, because you can suffer a lot of things because you're just hard headed. Anybody been there? Yeah. I, 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 I've been to that school before. <laughs> Sat at the top of the class a couple times. <laughs> All right. But when you suffer for Christ, right? Then uh, those are the things where the transformation takes place. You know, when you when you put all that you can into the circumstances and the situ in the situation that you know that God has for you to give, and and, and you said I've given all that, that the Lord has given me to this particular circumstance, be it family member or, or, or relationship, or job or health or whatever the case may be, God transforms. Okay. God shows you that there is what? More to the circumstance. Right, so we're going to continue to see this. All right? And it says, um, so, and then, the, you know, he added that word daily, which means that it's not something that you just do once. You know, it ain't something that you just have. It ain't like celebrating your, you know, your 13th birthday. Well, when did you become a teenager? Well, it, and there's only one time that, that happens, that 13th birthday. But this is not that. This is when you do something on a what? Daily basis. All right? And so uh, the scripture tells us that, that we should pray what? Always. We should be meditating on, uh, on the word when? All the time. So we're doing it. And the example that I like to give is, is that, you know, having the Lord in your heart and in your mind is like breathing or like blood circulation. If your blood stops circulating, eventually, you might not know it right away. But you let it sit there for a while. You, you know, you, sometimes you, 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 you sit a certain way or you go to sleep a certain way and then that blood stops circulating in that arm and you wake up, all of a sudden you got that little tingly feeling and you know that, and you got, oh, you start shaking because you're trying to get what? The blood circulating. You begin to recognize right away. And if you don't recognize it, that arm will eventually do what? It will stop working. You will do permanent damage to it. So the circulation of the blood and the breathing you try to hold your breath, your body will take over. You can say in your mind, I'm going to hold my breath until I pass out. And the minute you pass out, guess what your body's going to start doing? Breathing. Breathe. Mm -hmm. All right. So, those are the things we should be able to be in the Word and be in prayer like our blood circulation and like our breathing. It should be part of our daily activity. Always do it. But you can't do it unless you what? Have it. So that's that's why we what we do here. We come to get the the, the word. You do it in your spare time. Amen. You know, however the Lord gives you to do even on your own. Right? And those are some things that we should make sure that we are doing. So he says you pick up your cross daily and follow me. Alright, so this and he said now, what does this accomplish? If anyone is willing to, to follow me, he must renounce himself. Now, when you remove yourself, what do you add? You're adding the cross, and you're doing it what? Daily. daily. And you're following him. 
For whosoever wishes to save his soul will destroy it. Now, that seems counterintuitive, don't it? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to save yourself, if you're trying to better your circumstances from a natural standpoint, you will die in the spiritual. Right? If you're trying to, uh, uh, wishes to save his soul, it didn't say body. It said what? Soul. This is a spiritual aspect. We're not just dealing with the body, but we're dealing with what? More oh. than just the body. We're dealing with the full you. All right? Because you're, you're, you're a body, soul, and spirit. All right? But if you're trying to, to, uh, to preserve that, uh, then you're going to lose it. But he says, uh, for whosoever wishes to save his soul will destroy it. But whosoever destroys his soul for my sake and the gospel. There's that word being added again. This one will find it and will save it. So what is he saying here? If all of your soul, and your soul deals with all of your emotions, your feelings, your, your, your anxieties, your hopes, your dreams. If all of those things are about you, trying to save you, then you, won't, you will lose. Because the greatest thing that you can learn to do on this earth is to help others. Amen. When, if you really want to get over the aspect of not being happy, I, I'm not happy, I, I have no joy, more than likely it's because you are trying to make yourself happy. And that's why you don't have the joy to do it. If you try to find ways to bless other people, I can almost guarantee you if you do this, you will find some joy. Amen. The joy will come into your heart. All right. Now, um, this is something that you should seek God for because therein is a ministry. Everybody has a ministry. Amen. Everybody's been called to do something. There's Amen. somebody that God wants you to bless and, and help you. And, and, and maybe some people, some bodies, some, you know, some circumstances that God wants you to work in. But you're going to have to not seek always the situations that, well, this works for me. And this one works for me. Oh, and this works for me. Where does, well, this one does cost me a little bit. It does cost me some time. It costs me some effort. It costs me something. Yeah. You know, but the, the, the person or persons that I'm helping are getting something out of it. So it's worth it. Amen. Yes. I'm, I'm looking at the latter part of that sentence that says, but whosoever destroys his soul for my sake and the gospel, this one will find it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it in a sense of, even the previous sentence that said, deny yourself and follow me. Mm -hmm. If you're not chasing after the things that make you happy in this world, some people love travel, some people love money, some people have to have fine cars, some people have to have a PhD, you know, they just got to load it over someone doing something somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the way I see this is, whosoever destroys his soul, in other words, you're going to deny your own desires, pleasures, mm -hmm. wants, wishes, mm -hmm. for the sake of the gospel, because you're taking on the knowledge and the wisdom and the manner that God wants you, and the person he wants, he wants you to become. Exactly. So you're denying yourself in this world, in this natural plane, in order to build your spiritual, your spiritual house, your spiritual soul, exactly. so that you might save it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's what we have to have a mindset. Uh, and, and that's not something that we do uh, instinctively. Look at children. Mine, mine, mine. We've heard that, right? You know, you take something, they don't, they, 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 they it's, it's instinctive. But there is also a glimmer that you see too, because sometimes you see them do something where they share, and you're like, oh, and you get, oh, look at it. So both of them are, are, are there, but the stronger instance is usually self what? Preservation. So therefore we need the word to be able to do like what says said, to be able to go in and put my agenda aside and find what is God's agenda and begin to work and to build it. All right? um, when we get into the Old Testament, we'll see that God gave uh, the, the nation of Israel and their beginnings instructions on how to build a temple. Just bit by bit instructions on how to build a temple. Great instructions. Amen. When the Lord began to 
when he told us about how, how he created the universe, mm. he said, he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Just a, just a couple of words. But when it came down to building the temple, he gave chapter after chapter after chapter of detail, minute instructions. Why? Because building the temple is the most important thing. Because who is the temple of God? We are. So what God is doing, when we get into that, we'll see how the instructions for building a temple is just like the instructions for building you. That's why there's so much information on building the temple uh, because what God wants to, you to recognize is he is all about showing you how to build yourself. How you can trust and take the instructions that God gave just like he gave to Noah to build the what? The ark. The ark. All right. And so we are being instructed how to develop. And part of developing yourself is you cannot be selfish. That's the bottom line. That's what this basically is talking about. If you are selfish, then you are not going to be happy. Not for long. All right. For what does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world? Now, think about it. You gain the whole world. It all is yours. You got everything. You own it all. You, you own the government. You own the entertainment. You own everything. It's all yours. Hollywood don't do nothing without you saying it. The NFL don't do nothing without you talking to it. The Congress, don't, let's go check with, you know, this person first. They don't, you own it all. And what the, Jesus is saying here, what is he saying here? What benefit? What does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world yet destroys or forfeits his soul? So, and what the Lord is saying is your soul is more valuable than if you take everything on this planet and add it up and whatever number you come to, your soul the soul of one man, one person, is more valuable than everything here. Amen. So oftentimes we look at things and we say, well, you know, you see our world and people are suffering and dying and everything. And we see joy and, 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 and pleasure and happiness and sadness. We see all this. But all that put together is not more important than your soul. Amen. And, and and remember I told you in the beginning, I said there's some things that I just won't be able to fully explain. And then this is this is one of them right here. When you think of the, the difficulty, you sometimes you watch some of the news clips and you see children suffer. And he's like, because in this realm it hurts to see that. But you gotta recognize, no, there's more. If a child suffers and dies, there's more because I, I, I can't be uh, callous to that. I feel it. But at the same time, there's more. Because the Bible says, suffer not, the, uh, forbid not the little children to come unto me. So I think about the age, the, the, how, how the Lord has uh, the, the age of accountability where the innocent children, they come to the Lord. So I have to then say to myself, when I think when I see a child that was, that was mistreated, I say, well, I believe there's more now for that child. That child, Amen. I think, right now is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And 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 I and I I have to have that to be able to recognize the greatness and the goodness of the Lord. Amen. It's difficult to see some of these things, um, and that's why I say that. I, can I give you a a concrete answer that just takes away all the the hurt? And I cannot do that. But I can tell you that you have to recognize there's more. Amen. God's got more. And, 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 and you have to reconcile that in your own heart. And, 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 and in your own relationship with the Lord. Amen. That God's got more than what we can see. So when we see suffering, we got to be, there's more to this. I'm, I'm only seeing, I'm seeing the pain. And I can't be callous to the pain. I, I, I sympathize and I hurt with these people that go through difficult situations. But I have to recognize that God has more. And there's something to this that I may not be able to fully explain, but I do know this. That when I can say that when children suffer and they go on to, and die, 
that they are with the Lord. I, I believe that with all my heart. Amen. That there's more. All right. So um, when we see things like this, uh, that gaining the whole world it, it brings you nothing. But knowing Jesus gives you everything. I was thinking in terms of, as you were speaking, it says, for what does it benefit a man if he gains the whole world? So to me, to the scriptures, I'm looking at Matthew 4, 4, as well as Luke 4, 4, and it says, but he answers and said, I mean, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So this is telling you straight up, and then that took my mind to another instance wherein uh, the Lord was fasting, you know, for, uh, well, I don't know how many days it was, but Satan came to him and tempted him. He said, look at all the kingdoms of this world. I'll give it all to you, you, go. Mm -hmm. you know, if you just worship me, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, it, it's so saying that even if you gain everything, as you said, that, mm -hmm. that exists, mm -hmm. yet, if you don't work to receive the word of God because it says you will live by any word that proceeds out of the mouth mm -hmm. then you'll forfeit your soul though you have it all mm -hmm. you still just forfeit your soul and I'm looking at all these billionaires that this man just put up in his cabinet mm -hmm. you know every billionaire is coming and going and I'm like wow doesn't matter if they gain this whole planet and every country on it and mm -hmm. in it if you don't have God in you, if you're not looking for His Word, if you're not seeking to gain back His will, His mm -hmm. words, you lost it all. That's right. That's right. And, uh, and that's, that's a good analogy. I was going to bring that in, but uh, Mother, you're right on tune with that. Because that same thing of the gain in the whole world was offered to who? To Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He rejected it. Knowing that He was going to do what? Suffer, take up the cross. All right, and so um, those are the things that we have to comprehend. And like I said, uh, you, when you get into um, receiving uh, uh, good things and 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 having a good life and all that, versus uh, being able to uh, know the Lord, and there's a balance there. And you say, well, what is the balance? I can't tell you what the balance is. That's, your, that's for you to experience with, with God. To what degree do you have comfort versus your ability to uh, step into realms where you know you're going to help other people, but it also may cost some of your comfortability. That's for you to decide. Everybody has to kind of come to that conclusion themselves. Now, what a lot of people want will tell me what to do. No. What does this? What does Jesus say to them? Jesus told these individuals to do what? Follow me. So that's what would be my advice. Well, you say, well, what should I do to be able to do? Follow Jesus. And ask the Lord what you should do. Because I can't tell you what degree of comfort and what degree of of discomfort you're supposed to experience. What type of blessing, what type of suffering you're supposed to experience. The Lord will tell you that. What things, and there's some things you already, you've already gone through. <laughs> They've already happened. You've already had them. But now, sometimes you need to understand, well, Lord, what am I to learn from this? How am I to use this? But you keep going every day. And how do you do it? Daily. All right. I've been, I went through this when I was a child, and, and I'm 30 years old. I still don't know how I was supposed to use it. I'm 40 years old. I still don't know how to But you do what? You, you, well, I'm going to stop asking. No, you do what? Daily. You keep saying, Lord. And you never know that day comes when, okay, this is why I had to go through this. I understand. I see it. And so that's why you got to do it every day. You can't quit. You can't give up. And yes, there's more to that, and that I, I, I definitely feel that um, that's something that we have to bring in in our own prayer time with the Lord. But he goes on. He goes, um, he goes. Uh, if you gain the whole world, yet destroy or forfeit his soul, or what will a man give for the exchange of his soul? 
And we already said, there's nothing more valuable than the soul of an individual, than your, your eternal existence. Amen. All right? And then he goes and uh, he says, For the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father. Who is the Son of Man? Jesus. Jesus. He's going to come in the glory of his Father. He's going to show that him and his Father are what? Are one. With his angels, and he will be uh, uh, paying to each according to his deeds. Now that's a very uh, uh, important scripture here. Uh, it's parallel in, the, in um, the Old Testament in Proverbs 24 and 12 where it says, And he will... Uh, and, and will he not render to man according to his works and then in Psalm 62 and 12 and it says and loving kindness is yours O Lord for you recompense a man according to his works and it's important to keep in mind that uh, there is an aspect that, that we have that the scripture tells us that whatsoever a man soweth that shall he what? Also reap. All right, and we can go on and on and on about the various things we see. These stories in the Old Testament, you know, uh, uh, that, that we can bring forth on how things happen. You remember David, right? When he mm -hmm. he uh, he cheated with the best Bathsheba, and then he called Uriah in to try to make to cover it up. But then when Uriah wouldn't go into his wife. He sent Uriah back and had Uriah what? He had him killed. Mm -hmm. then to, well, then you know God called him on. God forgave him. And God allowed him to, to continue on. But what happened in David's, uh, in David's children? His daughter one of his, and his half-brother uh, raped the daughter. And then, uh, then the brother, the full brother of the daughter that was, that was raped by the other half-brother went and killed that brother. So you, you see, it's... it's it's, it's interesting mm. how and why we need to come to the Lord. Amen. And when you, when you hide your sin, your sin will do what? Find we'll you find out. You out. <laughs> right? So therefore, that's why we have to cast all our, 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 our sins. Give them all. Lord, just confess them. This is what I got. You know, I, I got issues. I got mm. problems. Knowing that you cannot perfect yourself. Amen. Because if you could perfect yourself, we wouldn't need Jesus to die. Amen. But you need to still acknowledge that what he says is what? Is right. That's the key. I agree with God. That makes us one in thinking. Even though in behavior, we're miles apart. But I am begin to do what with my behavior? Modify it. Work on it. God then gives us what? Once the spirit comes in us, then the, the spirit will come and give you what? Power. Power. And that power will help you and instruct you. Mother, did you have a can you hand up? Yes, I just wanted to make a comment. I'm looking at the word deeds, which is synonymous to the word works, as you pointed out. And according to this dictionary here, it defines works as according to theology, it means righteous deeds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and in looking at that it would be important for everyone to know, well, what are righteous deeds? Or what the scripture considers as righteous deeds. If I'm, if, if I'm going to be paid at the end of time, and God comes back to judge all of humanity, mm -hmm. and he's going to repay each man according to his works. So then, what are the righteous deeds or the righteous works that he's expecting to see from me? Because when he opens his book, mm -hmm. book of life, and he don't see nothing in there from you, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't have any righteous words. Well, I guess you kind of got a pretty good idea of what he's going to say to you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, in many cases, people, when they see something like that, they say, okay, now give me a list. I mean, what do you consider, or what does the Bible consider righteous works and righteous deeds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, those are the things that, that, once again, from a traditional standpoint, this is how we have been taught. Um, that uh, if as a matter of fact, I heard somebody on my job say, say just, just last week, well, I think I'm going to heaven because I'm a pretty good guy. And, you know, because you do good things. And doing good, there's nothing wrong with doing good. I'm not saying that doing good is But what is the work that we should work? 
while we're here on earth. That one work that we should work is that we believe on him whom the Father has sent. If you do that, that's the one deed. If you do that deed, if you believe on Jesus, that's the deed. That's the work. But, you know, and I call it a work because it's not a work, it's just belief. You don't have to really do anything, accomplish anything. You just have to believe it. Like the thief on the cross. What did he do hanging up there? He didn't accomplish anything. But he just said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So he believed. So the thing that gets you into the presence of God is, and into the presence of the Father is perfection. And if your deeds are not perfect, you can't, sin cannot stand in the presence of God. The Bible says a liar will not even tarry in his presence. So therefore, you got to be perfect. So the only way you can have the perfection is if you accept the, the work of Jesus. Now, after you've accepted the work of Jesus, then we will have opportunities to gain rewards. Not gain eternal life. Eternal life is a what? Gift. It's a free gift. But you can get rewards mm -hmm. by what you are able to do as you have seen the light and you come to the Lord. Now you're doing these different things and those will be looked at and judged. The Bible says that all of our deeds will, will be judged through fire. Some will be uh, of, 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 of gold and, and silver and precious stone which will be able to do what? Go through the fire. But some will be what? Of wood, stu wood uh, 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 stubble and hay. Which will be what? Burnt up. So, uh, but the key though, and the thing that I emphasize, is that you know Jesus. Amen. That's the work that you know, that you believe on him whom, whom the Father has sent. That's the one deed you got to do. Amen. Now, after you've done that, then there's a lot of other things that you can do. Just to, and then we talked about that uh, earlier. The best thing that I can say that you can do, based on what I've seen in scripture, is help other people. Amen. Find a way to help somebody else. And that's it. You, you find ways to do that. And if you go out of your way to find ways to do that, and, and, and within the realm of what you are enjoying, don't make it a burden. Amen. Well, I'm going to go out here and do this because you know, I don't want to be standing up there in heaven with nothing. Well, guess what? It, that's, that's, everything that you're building is made of hay it's going to be burnt up anyway do it out of the goodness of your heart and ask God to lead you and you'll be surprised you will, you will be building up activity and work not work for salvation Amen. but work for love way of saying thank you to the Lord and all those things are important uh, as we continue to go through our, 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 our walk with the Lord and, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you but I was looking at 1 Corinthians 13, 2, and it says, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, mm -hmm. and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains mm -hmm. and have not charity, mm -hmm. I am nothing. Yeah, nothing. Mm -hmm. right. And why does he use the word charity instead of the word love? Because the word charity in the Greek represents active love. See, um, if I say I love a person and just say it, but never do anything, then I'm just billowing, I'm just talking. But charity means that you show your love through your actions, through activity. And that's why we even call giving to people charities, an action of love, a giving love. All right? And so that's an important aspect of our walk. Um, and so we have to have that. All right? So, um, he's letting us know here that the, the Son of Man has come um, in the glory of the Father and his angels, and he will be paying to each one according to his deeds. Right? So we want to make sure that the deed that the Lord sees for us is that we believe on him who he has sent. All right? For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words... In this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him whenever he comes in his glory and the glory of his
his father and of the holy angels all right really important aspect here of what the Lord is saying <coughs> that in order to have that deed you have to believe that that Jesus is it Amen. that's how I get there now if you don't believe that if you're ashamed of that if you don't I, I can't I, I can't accept that just believing in Jesus is it it's got to be more well maybe I gotta maybe I gotta believe in Jesus and be uh, and be as perfect as I can possibly be. Well, that's not what it says. It don't say if you if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved and continue to do even better work. If you have you have to accept that that's what it is. Now some people get get offended with that. Just believing in Jesus, just accepting what He says. And it messes with their intellect and with their pride. Because what do but don't I gotta add something to it? You know, you know, I, I can do a little bit more. I can and so pride snips, you know, sneaks in because we wanna feel that, well, you know what? I was able to contribute to my own salvation. <laughs> no, you were not. The only thing that you were able to do was to believe what was already given. It is a gift. I can't emphasize that enough. God has given us a gift. Yes. It's free. Amen. And you can't, you don't have, you just don't need to be ashamed of that. Alright, so accept it. But there are people that are going to be ashamed of that because they feel that they have to be able to have a, I got a little notch. You know, I know you, I know you love God and everything, but, but, but you're not, you know, you're not like there with me yet. You know, you just, you're not there. You, 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 you know, you're a good person, but you're not right here with me. So you have to watch that because the devil can use that. He, 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 he and, and he doesn't have the ability to make you not believe, but then he can make you believe that you believe, but you believe a little better than you. I believe a little better than you. And he can also, um, like when you make a mistake, make you also feel like. Oh, that's big time. That's, oh, yeah, that's his that, favorite one. He loves that. He, he, he loves that. Yeah, because see, the devil goes to God and tells God how bad you are, and then when God says, "All I see is Jesus," then he comes to you and tell you how bad you are. And what we got to do is say, "All I see is Jesus." But oftentimes our emotions kick in because we know we made mistakes. And then you're like, oh, I just, why can't I just, you know, because I lost my temper, I got upset, or I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have did that. And I'm not going to do that. Whereas that's, that's where God wants you to be, in his, it, it, amongst his own that believe like you. Yes, sir. I like it when he says, come boldly before the throne. Of come the boldly, that's right. Because when I fail and my flaws because I'm still in this flesh. I go and I say, God, have mercy on me. You know, like last week, I remember praying. I said, Lord, I'm sorry for taking my children from you. You told me to give them back to you, and I'm doing that. I'm sorry. And I went to God, and I told him, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I snatched them from you. You told me to train them up and then give them to you. And I... Trying, trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. I can't fix it. Mm -hmm. You fix it. That's right. And I'm sorry. See, when the devil's like, yeah, see what you're doing? I was like, no, 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 I'm going to the throne. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. And that's, the, the, all of that is part of getting clarity through the word. There's so much confusion that has been given. And that's what Jesus is dealing with in his day as he's walking. These Pharisees and Sadducees, which we have saw before, and all the tradition and the thinking and the teachings that they brought, and we have to get that what? Out. That's why he says you got to be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's important that we don't al allow the aspect of the simplicity of the gospel. He goes, for whosoever is ashamed of me and my words, Jesus says, believe on me and you shall have eternal life. 
well, that don't sound like it's, uh, that's just too easy. Some people get offended by that. Because they, because they want to use their brain power. You know, I'm, I, I got a PhD. I got, you know, I got a doctorate degree. And I'm sure there's something that I can do to add to that. Now, is there a prime example of this in the scripture? Yes. yes. Uh, 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 Naaman, when he went to Elijah to get healed, he has had leprosy and he was, you know, walking around there with leprosy and when they captured one of the Hebrew girls, they were like, well, if you were back in my old country, we got a prophet, he could, he could pray for you and you would be healed. Well, he went down there. And he said, well, I'm going to ask Elijah to come. And Elijah saw Naaman come. He said, he, he, Elijah didn't even go out to him. He sent his, his assistant. He said, go down there and tell Naaman to go dip down seven times. Go dip seven times in the River Jordan. And, 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 and you'll be healed. And, and when Naaman saw that, number one, I came to Elijah. I came all this way to see him. Don't he know who I am? He didn't even come to see me. He sent his servant, servant. and then told me to go dip in the dirty Dirty Jordan River. I'm not dipping down there. (laughs) And so he ready to just, I'm not doing it because he wanted it to be something that he did. He wanted that, I, you know, okay, yes, you're going to draw from my military experience. You're going to use something that's going to, he wanted to have some part in it that would lift his ability to feel like we did this. And God healed me because of how special I am. But then his servant said, now look, if he had told you to do some great thing, like go capture a city all by yourself, you would have went and tried it. Mm-hmm. Because it would have gave you some pride. But he told you something simple, like go take yourself down to the dirty Jordan and dip seven times and your leprosy will be healed. Now something as simple as that, and here you are offended. you all upset. You go, why don't you just do it? <laughs> this is what Jesus is talking about here. People, and so, of course, when Naaman went down there and he did it, he dipped seven times and came up clean. All right? And then he was like thankful. But people get offended at the words of Jesus. Because Jesus is not going to placate your intelligence. He's not going to placate your power. He's not going to placate your wealth. He's not going to placate your physical strength. Jesus is going to say, you can come to me as you are. And I see you as what? Wretched and undone. What, did, what, does, what is, uh, I see you here. What is, uh, 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 we described as? Uh, sin was described as uh, our righteousness. Yeah, filthy rags. Filthy rags. Thank you, sir. Oh, yes. Our righteousness. Our best righteousness is like what? Filthy, filthy rags. rags. Yes, mother. Go ahead. Right. Just to offer another perspective, uh, many of the time we gain knowledge of scripture and we know what God wants, or at least we somewhat know because we've been studying and reading and mm-hmm. praying and whatnot. So many of us have been raised in the church and whatnot. But uh, somehow or the other, in addition, I see this as, if, okay, so you feel somewhat comfortable with what you have gained. God did not give you all that he has given you and blessed you with so that you could keep it for yourself. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Now you're ashamed that for some reason you feel bad or humiliated or you think somebody might laugh or they might tell you get out of here or they might tell you to go to who knows where. Mm-hmm. And because of these things, you kind of close yourself up and mm-hmm. then you become unwilling to share right. your light, mm-hmm. right. your wisdom that you gained with others. But that also is not something that God is pleased with That's because true. he doesn't give light to be hidden. That's right. But to That's be right. shared. To be shared. That's right. And that's the beauty of, um, of being able to come together. Because not everybody brings the same perspective. Amen. And that's why we need each other. Amen. You know, um, you can run with your feet. Now, I've seen people run with their hands. And there's some people out there, they walk on their hands, they go pretty fast. But that ain't, the hands ain't designed for that. Amen. The, the, the feet are what's designed for that. So when, a per, when, when you have your feet, but your hands are designed to do other things. Amen. All right. So when you have a, a healthy body, then the feet can do what the feet do. The hands can do what the hands do. The eyes and the ears do what they're supposed to do. Right? And so we remember we talked about that about Paul, where he described the, the church as a body. Remember we went through that? And so, yes, we do. And sometimes we do get... Um, uh, it's, it's easy sometimes just to sit. But to actually share and to get in, <laughs> that's... That's a difficult thing because 
uh, I mean, I have to confess. I mean, I, sometimes I'll be on my job and somebody will say something and I'll be like, <laughs> and, and, and I have to confess, not every time. Sometimes I just be like, you know what, I got work to do. And <laughs> I go back. And other, but other times, and I thank God, I'd be like, you know, I say, Lord, give me a way to just ease into this because I feel that this is, a, this is an opportunity. And I'm getting better at that, being able Amen. to see those opportunities and be able to say, and, and, and you recognize it's a gift. Amen. Some people have that gift. You know, some, some people have the ability to, when they see opportunity, they bust through the doors. Like, they, they ain't even waiting. They just bust right on through. I think of my brother right here. You know, <laughs> I mean, with, with opportunity to open the door, he bust right in. But that's a gift. You know, he, he I, I saw the door and I walked in. They said this, so if you said that, well, I'm going to say this. Those are great opportunities, and, and some things you have by learn, and some things you have by gift. And so that's a good point, uh, the mother's bringing out, that once again, there's a lot of ways of being what? Ashamed. Amen. There's a lot of ways that we could be ashamed of the, of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. All right, but he, look what he says. Let's finish this up, reading this portion again. Uh, For whosoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation... And he's talking about this, this generation. This generation is the generation that should be ashamed because of what they're doing. But they're brazen. Yeah? It still goes on today. It still goes on today. Amen. The Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of his Father and of the holy angels. So we, we got to make sure that I'm, I'm cool with Christ. Amen. I don't mind being called a follower of Jesus. Amen. And, and learn to speak as the Lord gives opportunity. Amen. Finishing this up, it says, And he said to them, Truly I say unto you, that there are some of those standing here who will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, the kingdom of God coming in power. All right, now, we are not going to be able to get to, to the next part, which is the transfiguration, where Jesus will show to them more of who he is. Because you think you see Jesus. They're looking at you, but Jesus is going to let them, there's more to me than what you just see. Amen. But just like there's more to me, guess what? There's more to you, too. There's a whole lot more to you. And there's parts of you that you have not even been able to comprehend or see yet. But guess who sees it? The Lord sees it. The Lord sees it, which is why the Lord can the Lord can look at at, at it. when he's on earth, when he was on earth, he could look at an individual and he wasn't just looking at their natural body. He's also seeing their what? Their spirit, their soul. Seeing what now we can't and he calls this generation an adulterous generation. Adulterous and simple generation. And um, because there are Sin puts evidence of itself uh, on those who sin. And it's, it, it's always there. However, in the natural, we can't see it. Amen. Okay. Now, um, in the aspect of, of he called adulterous generation, which means the, a, a sexual sin, in that day, if you were doing that sin... Generally, if you're practicing that, there would be, for the woman, an evidence of the sin. What's that evidence? Okay. Pregnancy. Mm -hmm. right. You start to see them, what, they're getting, you know, this. And so, from a natural standpoint, Jesus, he, he, he pointed that one out because that's a sin that y'all can see. We can, we can see that when that happens. But what Jesus is letting you know, I can see the evidence of every sin. Amen. See, we can hide evidences of, of lying. You can hide evidences of stealing. You can hide evidence of, of hatred. Mm -hmm. right? and, and nowadays with technology and all the stuff that we do, we can even hide the evidence of adultery and fornication. We can hide that too. We get abortions and use the, you know, the, the, uh, the pill or you know, all the different things that people do. So we've, come and we've gotten better at doing what? 
from a natural standpoint, hiding sin. Mm -hmm. But you cannot hide it from, from God. God sees all the evidences of sin. So he, when he says that this adulterous generation, he says this generation that, that is full of sin that he can see. But now he says, but there is a part of you that you don't see. And that is your, your, your spirit and soul. Now what he's going to do in our next story is he's going to allow you to see something that you can't see about Jesus. Jesus is, has the glory of the Father in him. And he, he is the glory of the Father. And he's going to allow you to see something that from a natural standpoint you normally can't see. Now we, he said, I know you can't see sin all the time, but what you also can't see is the glory either. And so in our next story, he's going to show you, he's going to show them that, which is why he made this statement. There's some of y'all sitting here, y'all going to see something that y'all never see, seen before. You're going to see how I have, there is what, more to me. But just like there's more to me, guess what? There's more to you too. Right, and you need to see that. So we're going to stop here. That's just a little segue into next week, the Lord willing, that we will have. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Can I have a few synonyms sure. for the word adultery? So yes. That, you know, all, when I was growing up in church, all I ever saw adultery was, you know, a man and a woman or a woman and a woman or somebody, you know, committing something erroneous within the confines of a relationship or something like that. Mm-hmm. But then when I started studying the scriptures, I discovered that adultery meant so much more than that, and it literally, I mean, began to start blowing my mind, because mm -hmm. there's so many ways of looking at it. Now, according to this dictionary, which has a synonym finder built in, adultery is also, means bad faith. It means betrayal. It means disloyalty to an obligation. Mm -hmm. Adultery also means cheating. We all know about extramarital relations, but adultery is also faithlessness and falseness. How many people ever thought that that's what adultery meant? Adultery is inconsistency, lewdness, perfidiousness, treacherousness. Treason is also adultery. Two-timing is adultery. Unfaithfulness is adultery, uh, and the rest of this just goes into relationships. Well, that, all those different words yeah. also mean that's adultery. a that's a very good point uh, because the way that adultery is used oftentimes in the in, in in scripture, especially in the Old Testament, is not from a a a man woman uh, relationship, but from a um, a, a people and their God relationship. Israel was called an adulterous nation because they were married to uh, to God, but was going out and serving other God. other gods. And so you're leaving the one whom you were married to to go worship someone that is estranged to you. So a, a lot, their, their worship was an adulterous uh, uh, worship. They, they went after other gods. And so we'll see that uh, quite a bit uh, when we get into the, uh, um, into the Old Testament study. That um, the Lord Jesus sees that and he calls them that. So yes, uh, that, that statement is not just one that is confined to the, the physical relationship, but also the spiritual relationship, which is what he's going to show forth in our next uh, on our next uh, story here, story 117, that, uh, and, and funny too that you mentioned that because in that story, a little, little bit of a, uh, a spoiler here, when Peter sees it, he says, he says, let's build what? Three tabernacles. Mm -hmm. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. Well, once again, that's an adulterous relationship. You don't build, you're not worshiping Moses. Mm -hmm. You're not worshiping Elijah, mm -hmm. you only worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to you're trying to have your faith in one, but I'm also going I'm also going to have a house for this person, and I'm going to have a house for that. One. No, you only have one, and that's why the Father comes in and says, "This is my beloved Son. Hear ye Him." That's who you hear. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, all right, we're gonna stop because if we don't, guess what?